Now it's time for another Board Game Brawl preview with Nick Meenahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey peeps, today we're going to take a look at a game called The Wizard's Path from Red Island Games. It's seeking funding on Kickstarter right now, and if you like what you see throughout the rest of this preview video, I'm going to encourage you to go to their official Kickstarter project page, which is going on right now, and hopefully you'll consider backing the project. Now, The Wizard's Path is a competitive game for one to four players, meaning there is a solitaire version of the game. I don't go over it in the overview, but know that it is there. It does exist. But in the main game, for two to four players, you are trying to build a path path as the name of the game implies for your wizard this represents a uh, different affinity for elements that you're going to be trying to attain and build this path of cards which is uh in a way almost like a traditional rummy style card game because you're placing these cards in a sequence however where the magic comes into play is that many of these cards have different special abilities and also there is affinity between elements like you represent an element so it's easier for you to place down cards that uh you have a natural affinity for but you also have allied elements which could be stronger for you as well and there's quite a lot of other intricacies too that we're going to go over in the overview so let's not delay any longer let me go ahead and get straight to that overview with a prototype version of the game so do note that some things may change in the final version of the game but in any case when we come back i'll get to my final thoughts The Wizard's Path is a competitive worker placement and hand management game for 1-4 to four players. Every player is an elemental wizard trying to build their path. The game ends when one or more players has completed a balanced path. The player who then has the best completed path with the most strength, power, and influence will be the winner. The main cards in this game are the Life Deck. There are three different types of cards in this deck. The Pip cards range from Ace to Ten and come in the four elemental suits air, earth, fire, and water. These will make up the bulk of your wizard's path in sequence. For your path, the sequence depends on the number of players. For two players, you must go from ace to ten, but for four players, it's ace to eight. The path cannot contain doubles of numbers. The court cards are kings, queens, knights, and pages. They may be used as wild cards for your path, with no strength, or put into your allied court for victory points and to gain special abilities. Finally, Magum cards are spells that give you a special ability that can boost your path if your path strength is high enough. You can have up to four in play opposite your path. Regarding strength, every player is associated with an element. When playing cards of your element, you must only discard one card, but your cards are only one strength on your path. Allied element cards, however, like Air and Earth for Water, cost two discards but are worth two strength in your path. Rival element cards must immediately be played down into your rival space, and they count as negative one strength each. To set up the game, each player chooses an element and takes their reference cards and four key crystals representing their element. The crystals will be used as workers in the build path phase. In the wizard's way phase, they're used for several things like influencing your magum and giving to players that you want to challenge. The first player gets the bag that typically holds the crystals as a sign that they're the first player. Take the nine large focus scroll cards and place them as depicted. Put one card from the life deck on top of each card. During phase one, starting with the first player, everyone goes around and takes one action on their turn. One thing you can do is choose fate. You put one of your crystals above one of the cards on one of the focus scrolls and take the card to your hand. You can expand your path by adding a pip card to your sequence, remembering to discard to pay for it. You can retrieve one of your place crystals to activate the now revealed special action. Finally, you may pass. When everyone passes, this phase is over. Everyone takes back their crystals, then discards any lingering cards on the field and replaces them. Then you move on to phase two, which is the wizard's ways. You can play a magic card face down so long as its strength is equal or less than your path strength. Put one of your crystals onto it. You may only have four in play. You can invoke a Magum with no crystals on it by discarding and using its ability. You can channel a Magum and place a key crystal onto one to add its power to your path. You may also discard cards equal to your court card's influence in order to place that card into your allied court and therefore gain its ability and victory points. You may also cancel the effect of a rival with one of your crystals. And finally, you may challenge another player's path. Give them a crystal and compare the strength of those two paths. 
You may then go back and forth by channeling Magium or nullifying rival cards until there is a clear winner in strength. If your strength ends up as strictly higher, you win and can either move a card in anyone's path, place down an allied court card for free, or swap a card from your hand for one of the focus scroll cards. The loser gets to add a free pip or court card to their path. Phase 3 is Meditation. Return all crystals to their owners, flip all Magim cards, discard rival cards, discard and redraw unwanted cards, and check to see if anyone has completed their path from ace to either 8, 9, or 10 depending on the number of players. If more than one person completed their path, you must add up all of your power, the path strength, the power of your Magim, and the influence of your court. Whoever has the most power amongst those who had completed their paths is the winner. Also, if you choose to play the advanced game, each player has a different elemental card and discard ability. For instance, Air is able to hold two more cards or move a card in their path by discarding a card. Court cards in the advanced game also have abilities, like the King enabling you to gain the elemental abilities he's associated with, or the Queen reducing the cost of cards associated with her element. That is the Wizard's Path. On to my final thoughts. The Wizard's Path is very interesting because at first you think, oh, okay, this has a lot of traditional card game elements to it, and it does at its core. However, it takes those very modest elements and sort of spirals them out into something much more grandiose. As I mentioned in the overview, this is essentially worker placement with some hand management involved. So, in other words, you have to very carefully decide how you're going to spend your crystals. You're not really spending them, you're moving them to different areas. If you want to put them out onto one of the focus cards in order, to, or the focus scrolls, excuse me, in order to take one of the cards, the life deck cards that are on there, well, that's what you're going to have to spend your crystal for. And then retrieve it in order to take the action underneath that, which is, I didn't go over every single one of them in the overview, but there's a lot of different abilities out there for you to take advantage of. On top of the fact that you have the the, uh, the Magim cards, which is a whole other thing that's in there where you can use them in multiple different ways. This is one of those things that I've talked about before in the past where you can use cards for multiple different things. Very much so is the case with the Magim cards and which, with the Court cards as well. So the Court cards can be used uh, both to have their special abilities. You can use them as wild cards if you need to complete your sequence but you're giving up strength in order to do so, or potential strength, by having a better card in that sequence. Uh, or you can just uh, have them for uh, power, your total cumulative power, at the end of the game, as well as getting their special ability if you're playing in the advanced game. And that's another interesting thing, too, is that you can do the beginner game or the advanced game, decide how complicated you want the Wizard's Path to be um, when you first start off playing. Uh, back to the Magium, it's very interesting that you can um, use them in different ways. You can use invoke them for their abilities by getting rid of them, but but then you're potentially giving up uh, added temporary strength by using them, which is especially useful when you uh, take the action during the uh, Wizard's Way phase to challenge one of your opponents, which is a good way to get yourself ahead if you find yourself lagging behind. So there's a lot of really interesting things going on in this game. Like I said, it's taking a very simple card game element, but sort of uh, expanding it into something a little more grandiose. So people who uh, can get into traditional card games but also want a better, more strategic experience or, in their opinion, better uh, experience, then uh, that's what they're looking for, something a little bit more grandiose, then they should definitely check out The Wizard's Path because this might be right up their alley, especially people who like um, seeing cards used in different ways, lots of different special abilities, different player powers because everyone's different element is different, and so on and so forth. You can go to the official Kickstarter project page. It's run right now there's going to be a link up in the top corner of your screen as well as down in the description section underneath this video those links will take you to the page find out more information than i could possibly tell you here and hopefully you'll consider backing the project that is the wizard's path from red island games thank you so much for watching take care thanks for watching follow us on facebook twitter and patreon and make sure to check out our sponsor board game bliss where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.